Hello, welcome to the Daily Levels for Wednesday, May 22, 2024. I'm Sam Morton. It's about 8, 11 a.m. Eastern. The levels that you see here will be used to trade against in the E-minis. We will come back to this chart after the market closes and analyze all the trades taken in the E-minis based off the levels here in the Spiders. See you then. A little late getting to the recording tonight, but it's all about the levels. Let's take a look here. If you just want to take a look at this chart as we left it this morning. Levels here worked pretty well. 53031. That's a trade. I took this trade. That was recorded. I mean, the whole day was recorded. Did not take the trade down here at this zone. A reason you shouldn't have, but after seeing them fall a little bit before the FOMC meeting minutes release, I just kind of felt a little bit leery about this area. Although it did work. I mean, I can just point out here uh, it came into this first level. I mentioned this before. When it's a zone, I don't typically uh, add a buffer. There's really no need because this whole area is important. But anyway, it came down, bounced up. You would have had a base hit on each one of these. But if you weren't quick enough to pull the base hit on the individual trades, the average of the two gave a base hit with a few pennies to spare. But I did find the low down here. And uh, this could be interesting. I'll show or will be interesting because I want to maybe ask the audience at large why you think I was able to identify this as the low for the day. And I entered a trade and got a base hit down here around 527 90, I think, was my exact entry as they were coming back up when I realized what was happening. But let's take a look at the recording of the live trades today. To start, we'll look at the trade that happened on the long side when the spiders came in down into 530.36. That's uh, with the level adjusted, by the way, from the calculated level. Uh, so it was about 10 minutes before noon when this happened, 11.50 or so. So I'll just play it from this point. And it was pretty quick. They dropped pretty fast into it. And I wanted to take or buy two contracts here. Then I changed my mind and bought three. Figured I'll take two off at a base hit and trail one. Because at this point, I'm still hoping, or not hoping, that's not the right word to use, still uh, anticipating that they're going to come up here to this unfinished business area. This is only we've been talking about. If that were the case and I could sustain the trailer the entire way up, that would be a nice little run. So there's my three contracts long. And you'll see me put the two contracts to buy back at a base hit at four points and that happened so let's just speed this up so this took a little while as they pulled me up with the remaining one contract and well actually before I scrub ahead here let's just think about what would happen if I had taken three off all three off here that would have been uh, $600 at the four points of three contracts but instead I got 400 on two and after all this watching this thing just pull me up and you know, this is like a seven, maybe six point trailer. I can't remember what I put on there. Seems to, tends to work pretty well. Got up to 100, a little more than I thought. Yeah, 137.50, that was it. So at 137.50, now granted they're in the money more, but I'm just, there's nothing to lose by riding this trailer up because everything I have to gain is if they continue to go higher up into this area, then I'd probably start looking to, to jump out of it before that area. But, uh, as it happened, they came down and stopped me out at the 137.50. So net is 537.50, whereas if I'd just taken the entire three contracts off at a base hit, it would have been $600. So just trying to you know reiterate the point that oftentimes, while it isn't, it isn't as impressive to watch a trailer for a while, you end up getting more, in my experience, by just taking the, the, um, the entire thing off, your entire position off. Okay, so they fell pretty hard at this point and I adjusted the level made or adjusted the chart just to kind of get a picture of everything because leading up to this FOMC meeting minutes data release I'm not really sure what's going to happen and I didn't feel all that good about taking a trade here but just watch what happens uh, leading up to two o'clock as we already saw on the full day this would have worked had you wanted to take there's really no reason not to take this I don't really look at these days like this as the same day when they release the policy, the two-day FOMC meeting, Tuesday and Wednesday. There tends to be you know, a lot of whipping around on those on that Wednesday um, media or data release day, the, the policy release announcement. I guess I can call it the FOMC announcement. But I wasn't 100% sure about what was going to happen today. And just wanted to wait and see what and find out what happened after the fact. I w so I wasn't really willing to trade this, but I was, was willing to trade down at 527 if they came this low, if that was the the direction that the the meeting minutes release was going to push the market. At this point, all we know is we're going to shoot back up to the top. But I guess 
I guess I could speed this up, but we're getting pretty close to two o'clock. So just want to want you to watch them come down right into this zone and pull away, just like we anticipated from this morning. So they gave the trade. That was a base hit there. If you're quick enough. And down into the second level. So the average of the two gave a base hit when they came back up a few minutes later. So I'll scrub ahead so you can see this. As you see, I was not in this trade. I just watched it. All right, so now they, they're coming down into 527.17. And so uh, what time was it? Yeah, okay, let me start. I'm going to let this run from this point. It sped up 16x. I had a hard stop at 3 o'clock. And I saw something materialize. And it was on a different chart. I'll just give you one hint. It was an it was a SPY chart, just a different time frame. And I saw, I believe, four things. I will confirm that later because I want to kind of ask everyone here if they're interested in kind of playing along here, if they can identify some or all of the four clues that I saw that told me this was the bottom, what they were what they were doing here. So I just bought at the market two contracts right around here, right before. You know, quarter quarter till three o'clock or so, and wrote it up four points and got my quick base hit there at this level, which is not on the board. It's something I'm just looking at in real time because I never waited, made it down to five. I mean, I would buy again if it came down here, but like I said, I'm looking for a, a quick trade, and I had to stop at three o'clock and pack up and head out for an appointment, so I was able to do all this pretty seamlessly. So I'm just waiting for the order to just show up. There we go. So I bought right there. And I'm looking for four points. And it didn't take very long. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I slowed this down a little bit. So this is like maybe 4x uh, sped up, just to kind of show you this closer to real time. So it's not going to you know, fly by in a, in, a, in a blip here. Let me give me a second scrub ahead because you probably just want to see them come up and satisfy that four points. And soon thereafter, I just close this down. And they continued to go quite a bit higher than this. And what's interesting also, let's go ahead and stop this at this point, they closed the day above kind of an important area. Maybe I could show this to you on the daily chart later, but uh, back to the full day just to talk about one more thing. So now what we're looking at is the two trades here shown in the dotted lines here and down here. This level was not on the board this morning. It ended up being 527.90. And I am looking at the other chart. The only hint I'll give you, it's another SPY chart, just a different time frame, and I have counted four. There's four different reasons why I saw a reason for an interim bottom, a trend change, and a bounce in the other direction. And it worked out pretty well. They came down again and, and bounced up, but you know, I was out of the trade pretty quickly. And so just curious if anybody wants to take a guess at what these clues were, you know, feel free to comment in the section if you want to you know, play along here. And that's just on one of the time frames. Another time frame... Um, a larger time frame than the one I'm referring to gave another very good reason. So a lot of good reasons to uh, to just abide the market here and wait for a reaction. And the daily chart, let's take a look at that. So I just want to point out a couple things here on this daily chart. For one thing, they've been climbing still. This is on low volume. And this consolidation under our level, this is the, 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 the zone up here. Uh, it's less and less important. The more they hang out underneath this, they could be wanting to push higher. Uh, but don't forget that we're still on time on the weekly and the monthly chart for a rollover, but it could take you know a little while. It could take another couple of weeks or so. But anyway, so I just want to point out that where they closed today, the official close, at least on the uh, trade station chart here of the spiders, is 529.83. And this big breakup candle, is, which created this kind of a bull flagish type of uh, pattern here, the close of that was 529.78. So they close today right above this. So, I mean, there's, they can still come down and still have this bullish consolidation valid. But, you know, I find it interesting. They fought their way all the way back up and kind of closed above this uh, you know, relatively important candle here. Because you can could, you could make the case here that, you know, they gapped above. So, really, from where they closed here on the day, what day was this? The 14th of May, and then the Ides of May, the middle of May, the 15th here. This is essentially a big candle up here. They pushed all the way up. And they've been going sideways. Uh, under this zone, and given the appearance that they want to go higher. But once again, not to uh, beat a dead horse, but I don't really like predicting the long-term stuff. Only interested in the levels from that are that are calculated and identified every morning because they work the majority of the time, as you are seeing every day here. So uh, that's it. Let's take a look at the log now.
playing by the rules, a quick base hit early on, and they came down into that other zone if you bought it both. Either way, however, however you would have played this play, playing by the rules, you would have got a base hit on both, so 12 points for those three levels. What I did was slightly less than that. I got three and a half points effectively on the first because, remember we talked about earlier, I had three contracts and it took two off at the base hit and trailed one, but since it, it didn't pull me all the way up, so the net was a less than a base hit on a full uh, on the full position. And then the other level here happened to be 527.90, and the equivalent in the E-minis where I bought and went long and got a base hit there. So I got seven and a half points. My total, you know, I had a couple trades, or a couple contracts at one, three contracts the other was like 900 and 70s, 900 and something dollars. Um, wasn't that bad uh, before commissions. So those were the trades. And as you can tell, these levels work the majority of the time. And just in case you're wondering, um, I'll just point out here, this profit and loss number here, what this is measuring is the days ending in the green versus the days ending in the red over time, over like 600 days, of which 451 trades were taken. So this doesn't, this excludes days where trades didn't happen because levels never got hit or things like holidays and, or after one o'clock or one thirty on FOMC important days where I just don't like to take trades because of the, of the whipsaw type of action you see. But anyway, um, not to, re not to repeat myself too much here. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll do this again tomorrow.